this one might not be for the kids. I thought if I'm going to do a video about animals drinking, I should do it while drinking. This will be interesting. I'm not normally much of a drunk, to be honest with you. I get to a certain place where I say something and something comes out of my mouth that I wasn't expecting. And that's when I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go sit on a curb for a little bit by myself. I don't like feeling completely out of control. But there is something that seems to be particularly true to human beings that we like to be a little bit inebriated, a little bit intoxicated, a little bit altered. Anybody who follows politics in the United States knows that it is incredibly difficult to pass an amendment to the Constitution. And it still blows my mind that they were actually able to pass an amendment back in the early 20th century to ban alcohol. And it was such a problem, they passed another amendment to bring it back. The only other thing that has more than one amendment attached to it might be slavery. So yeah, we likes to get our drink on. In fact, it's kind of one of those human things. It's kind of one of those things that sets us apart from all the other animals in the world. Or does it? As I've stated on this channel before, if you look past through history, this is gonna be a struggle. You know what, if Hannah Hart can get away with this every week, I can do it once. When you look back through the history of science, it seems to be one after another after another incidents of breaking down barriers between the human race and the rest of the world. Once upon a time, we thought we were like a singular species. We were separate from nature, but the more we look into it, actually we're not separate from it at all. We're not even separate, you know, on a particle level from, you know, the universe. <sighs> it's kicking in. Turns out there's actually a lot of examples of animals in the animal kingdom in nature that like to get drunk. Now, obviously these animals aren't out, you know, brewing their own beer and distilling their own whiskey and making their own wine and that kind of thing. Most cases of animal intoxication comes from animals eating fermented fruits. In the fermentation process, the sugars in the fruits wind up turning into alcohol. The animals eat the fruits and then they get all brew. There are a lot of different anecdotal evidences out there. <laughs> Uh, cases of animal intoxication are manyfold, but I'm going to talk about five specific ones. The first animal that likes to get drunk are bats, the bits. Bats have been known to eat fermented fruit on a regular basis, but interestingly, they actually handle their alcohol really well, like way better than we do. In a 2009 study in Belize, they actually intoxicated some bats up to 0.3% blood alcohol content, just for uh, perspective there for in the United States the legal limit for driving is 0 0.08 but they peer pressured these bats into getting drunk to a ridiculous amount and then put them through an obstacle course I had them fly through <laughs> had them fly through an obstacle course and these bats actually performed perfectly well they didn't seem to be affected by the alcohol at all in nature of course these bats would get drunk off of fermented fruit and studies have shown that these animals in nature will eat fermented berries and fruit to get a little bit tipsy, but it doesn't affect their flying, so uh, good for them. In the Caribbean islands, there's a type of monkey called the vervet monkey, which is famously alcoholic. Back in the old plantation days in the Caribbean, sugarcane was the big industry and rum making was the big thing in the Caribbean. And these monkeys a long time ago kind of developed a taste for rum. It's actually kind of sad when you think about it. 5% of the vervet monkey population in the Caribbean are actual alcoholics, and one in five prefer the taste of alcohol over water. Much like humans, teenagers do it more than adults do, because the adults, it's thought evolutionarily, kind of need to be alert and responsible. And it's especially a problem on the island of St. Kitts where uh, vervet monkeys have been known to go onto the beach and steal people's drinks <laughs> and take it away from them. So if you ever go to St. Kitts, watch out for the monkeys. They will take your booze. Apparently reindeer like to get messed up, but not over alcohol, but magic mushrooms. Apparently reindeer and magic mushrooms are both very prevalent in Siberia for some reason. Why magic mushrooms in Siberia? I don't know, but the reindeer have been known to eat the magic mushrooms and uh, go a little bit weird. Trip balls, if you will. In fact, eating the magic mushrooms, the psilocybin mushrooms, is kind of a long-held tradition amongst the Siberian tribes, so the people there tend to eat magic mushrooms as well, so they get, they get messed up right along with the reindeer, I guess. Party with the reindeer, 8 o'clock tonight, fellas. Interestingly, it's actually thought that this is where the myth of the flying reindeer in the whole Santa story came from, is that the Siberian tribesmen would eat the magic mushrooms and then see flying reindeer, and that became a whole Santa thing. So, now I've ruined Christmas. In Tasmania, wallabies, which are kind of like miniature... What does a wallaby look like? I started to say the wallabies are miniature kangaroos, but I want to be sure about that. Yeah, they're like miniature kangaroos. 
In Tasmania, wallabies are known to go into the poppy fields and eat all the poppies. Something I learned uh, researching this, apparently Tasmania has one of the largest legal opium fields in the world. That's like a big industry in Tasmania, and it's a problem that the actual government of Tasmania had to deal with was that the wallabies were getting into the poppy fields and getting all messed up. Wallabies are hardcore, yo. Last but not least is the pintail shrew of Malaysia. Apparently it drinks two hours a night fermented palm juice. This is from a 2008 study by the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Fermented palm nectar apparently has the same alcohol content as beer. But here's the interesting part. They apparently don't get inebriated. They don't show signs of drunkenness at all, but they do this every night. It's thought that them doing this kind of encourages them to eat more, which causes them to consume more calories, grow bigger, be able to you know live past the, the lean times, that kind of thing. Where it gets interesting is that shrews share a common ancestor with humans. So it's thought that this behavior of drinking alcohol, whether to get inebriated and intoxicated and altered or to consume more calories as a survival mechanism, it's thought that this may go back a long, long ways. So this shows just exactly how hardwired the drive to get intoxicated might be in humans. So why do people like to get intoxicated and a little messed up and a little inebriated? Is it just because it feels good? Maybe it's just because it feels good. It makes me think of a study that I read about where they were trying to determine why prisoners try to escape from prison. Like they spent millions of dollars on this study trying to figure out why prisoners escape from prison. And I was like, cause they're in prison? I think sometimes things are just that simple, but sometimes they're not. Because according to Terrence McKenna, he had an idea called the stoned ape theory. He believes that getting intoxicated, getting high, if you will, is one of the things that actually made us who we are. It's one of the things that made us human. It spurred on our evolutionary development. The whole idea comes from the fact that human beings seem to have developed from hominids to humans homo sapiens, really fast, evolutionarily speaking. According to the stoned ape theory by McKenna, this all happened because we, as the climate changed, we came out of the trees, our early ancestors came out of the trees, and then we began to hunt herds of livestock. Well, it turns out psilocybin mushrooms grow out of, well, cow dung. According to McKenna, as we followed these uh, herds of livestock, we began to eat the psilocybin mushrooms that came out of their dung and this actually you know caused us to trip out a little bit and by doing so it increased our visual acuity and our imaginations part of the stoned ape theory says that because of the aphrodisiac properties of uh i'm really strong on here guys part of the stoned ape theory says that because of the uh aphrodisiac properties of psilocybin mushrooms uh early people after they ate that would kind of engage in um massive piles of sex stuff all this sexual buggery led to all kinds of genetic diversity. And also he argues that what it means is that people stop thinking of their own children as their own responsibility. Because if you were in the big giant sex pile, you don't know whose children might be yours. So it developed more of a social structure around early humans. It sounds like a stretch, but that's part of the stoned ape theory. Now this is mostly stoner theory that's been going around for a long time, but there have been some recent archeological evidence to support it, just a little bit. For example, German scientists recently found mushroom spores in the fossils of a prehistoric woman from 18,000 years ago. Also, there are cave paintings in Spain that represent what looks like psilocybin mushrooms, or could be if you're you know, going that way with it. So if the stoned ape theory is true, it's not just that we enjoy getting our drink on. Getting our drink on might actually be one of the things that made us who we are. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. This, this was a challenge. Any kids that are watching this, don't drink. Don't drink. I want to thank the Patreon supporters that make it possible for me to drink in the afternoon. And I want to say, if you haven't seen this shirt online, if you would like to check this out, there's many others just like it. Uh, at answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. Please do like and share this video if you found it at least interesting or entertaining. If this is your first time here, I promise I'm not always drunk. There's lots of videos on all different types of topics. I usually post on Mondays. I also have random Thursdays. Please do check out some other videos, and if you like them, please subscribe. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Go out and have an eye-opening week, and I will see you next Monday, this coming Monday. Wow, this was a bad idea. <laughs> Love you guys. Take care.